I would say out of all the vitamins that I have worked with in practice, B1 is at the top of the list as far as creating effects. There are many different other vitamins or nutrients that you take, you don't really feel much change, at least initially. But B1 is different. You usually see pretty quick changes for a lot of different effects. And that's what I want to get into today, as well as talking about some of the warning signs and how you would end up with a B1 deficiency in the first place. B1 is intimately involved as kind of a, a helper nutrient for your mitochondria, the energy factory in the cell. And so if you're deficient, you're going to have a hard time making fuel. You're going to be tired. Okay, that's a big symptom right there. And relating to that fuel in the mitochondria, you need it to burn um, glucose. The more glucose that you have running through your bloodstream, the higher the carbohydrates in the diet, the more B1 you're going to need, or you are going to run out of B1 really fast because it's needed to metabolize this fuel. And when you run out, you can't burn that fuel. You're going to be tired. Now, what I mean by burning off glucose, I'm talking about like even using your own stored glucose as glycogen in your liver. So even if you're on the ketogenic diet, you do still uh, burn glucose to a certain degree. It's not just completely 100% fat burning or ketones. Uh, certain cells, certain parts of your body need glucose. And so there is a different um, levels of different types of fuel that you'll use at any given time. So B1 is uh, water soluble, which means it doesn't get stored in the body for a long time like the fat soluble vitamins, like vitamin A, D, E, and K. So if you're doing fasting, right? And let's say, for example, you're under a lot of stress and you're drinking tea, all of these things can deplete B1. And even if you have inflammation, you can use up more B1. So if someone is a diabetic, okay, they're going to have higher levels of sugar. Chances are they're almost always going to be deficient in B1. And this is why one of the major symptoms from a diabetic is peripheral neuropathies. Okay, so what is that? That is a situation where the lower part of your feet, you have this um, neurological problem, whether it's numbness, extra pain, burning, that's because you're low in B1. And that's where it shows up first. So you need B1 to build the myelin sheath. It's like the coating. Let's see if you could see this right here, this little wire, right? This is like coating around a wire. So that would be like myelin around your nerves. So you need to be one to support that. And without that, you start getting a short-circuiting uh, neurological issues. The autonomic nervous system, the main nervous system that controls the flight or fight mechanism and the recovery mechanism, and that's called the parasympathetic. And it's sometimes known as like rest and recovery, which works through the vagus nerve needs B1. And so there's a lot of conditions related to this vagus nerve B1 deficiency like a condition called gastroparesis, where your digestive system is just really slow. It's just not working. Food tends to stick around a lot longer than it should. This is why a B1 deficiency can create constipation. And part of these nerves also control um, the valves on the top of your stomach and even the bottom of the stomach. So if you have a valve problem at the top of your stomach, you have what's called GERD. Okay, so you're going to have like acid reflux, things like that. You can also have problems with the valve at the bottom of the stomach, and you can actually regurgitate bile coming up into the stomach and then coming up into the esophagus. And that can act as a very powerful detergent and irritate the lining of your esophagus all the way up into the back of the throat where you might have hoarseness or a chronic cough, and it can actually destroy some of the connective tissue. And as far as the autonomic nervous system goes, if you are in this situation where you don't have full sympathetic function, you can have a problem with excessive sweating or no sweating at all, excessive tears or no tears at all. So that has a lot to do with your ability to adapt to your environment. Like you might just get out of the shower and all of a sudden just break out in a sweat. Or if it's really extreme, you might stand up and feel dizzy. There's an extreme version of that called POTS where the body just cannot tolerate gravity stress. So you need B1. Another common uh, symptom, probably one of the most common one, is you just feel highly irritated. This nervous tension, this buildup of pressure that um, it makes it so you don't have any tolerance for stress at all. Boy, does B1 work for that. 
You give some B1 to a person within three minutes, they're just feeling calm. B1 is needed to make GABA too, and GABA keeps you relaxed and calm. And I'm not sure if this next effect is related to GABA or something else, but B1 is known to help someone just have a positive mental attitude. It's pretty wild. So if you have people around you that are kind of Debbie Downers or negative people, just slip some B1 into their coffee. There's also other uh, problems with the autonomic nerve system that you can have. Blushing, like getting a red face, uh, easily embarrassed. Even the regulation of temperature. If you can't tolerate uh, extreme cold temperatures or extreme you know, hot temperatures, you probably need B1. Typically, if someone is B1 deficient, they're going to have a tendency to be more cold and it's going to be very uncomfortable. And in their minds, they're thinking, oh, thyroid but they might just need B1. And by the way, as a side note, B1 helps thyroid cases. If you're deficient in B1, your pulse rate could go up as well. So if we think about it from the viewpoint of what causes a deficiency of B1, like high carbohydrate diets or um, diabetics, what are the common symptoms for that? Well, anything related to the eye, cataracts, glaucoma, kidney problems, artery problems, brain fog issues, heart issues, nerve issues. So B1 can act as a very powerful antioxidant too to counter some of the oxidation effects that this sugar is creating on the kidneys, on the nerves, on the brain, and the eyes. So if you have cataracts or glaucoma, taking B1 would actually be very beneficial. But just realize that just getting B1 from the diet probably is not going to be enough, especially if you're trying to uh, achieve a therapeutic dose to create an effect. So you'd want to take some B1. Another interesting uh, effect, if you ever, if driving in a car and someone has motion sickness, give them some B1. If someone's trying to recover from a canker sore, give them some B1. So if someone consumes a lot of sugar, like I used to consume a tremendous amount, you're going to get what's called restless leg syndrome, which can be relieved with some B1. I'll never forget. I mean, in the middle of the night, I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning and pounding my legs like they were so restless. They would just wake me up. It was miserable. And I had no idea it was connected to this B1 deficiency. And probably the Ben and Jerry's didn't help. So remember, more carbs, more alcohol, more tea, the less B1 you're going to have. Now, you could actually develop more serious uh, problems with a B1 deficiency, a severe B1 deficiency, an enlarged heart, edema and swelling in the lower legs, mental confusion. There's another one, uh, what was that? Um, uh, memory loss, nystigmus, where your eyes are kind of going back and forth. You, you, sometimes you see that in children. I mean, think about how many kids are consuming so much sugar um, and they're highly irritated sometimes and they're a bit agitated and restless. Give them some B1, but also cut out the sugar. There's something else called ataxia, which uh, affects part of the brain. And when you walk, you stagger, right? You're not balanced anymore. Uh, B1 can help that condition. Hearing loss could be another symptom of a B1 deficiency. Sleep apnea is another one. This is why taking B1 right before bed can greatly help you with not just sleep apnea, but also panic attacks, nightmares, anxiety, and calming down that excessive thinking that goes on before you go to bed. It's not going to give you a lot of energy. It's just going to actually give you what you need to be able to sleep. Now, one thing that will keep someone up at night is not being able to breathe. The respiratory centers in your brainstem need B1. And when you're deficient, you're going to find you're going to have difficulty breathing. And that could be the reason why you can't sleep. I remember in practice giving people B1 and they're just like, wow, I just feel like I can breathe right now. So it's interesting. Breathing is going to help sleeping. Anything related to brain fog, uh, B1 can help. And also um, anything neuritis, like inflammation of the nerve, especially fibromyalgia. Now fibromyalgia, if it's on the right side, think gallbladder, taking a remedy like bile salts. But if you have fibromyalgia all over the place, take B1. As far as the type of B1, I would, would not recommend synthetic unless you're doing some type of short-term detoxification uh, because the synthetic B1, uh, the way they make it, they use hydrochloric acid, sometimes acetone. Uh, they use ammonia and even coal tar. 
So you can't imagine something that's made from that is like the same as something from nature. I personally take, it's called allithiamin. Okay, that comes from garlic extract. And I will put a link down below for more information on that. Another version of the B1 is called benfotamine. Now this is a different uh, form of B1. And yes, this one is made synthetically, but I've never had a problem with it because it's not made from coal tar and it's in a fat soluble form. So they made this water soluble B1 vitamin into a fat soluble vitamin. So it can actually penetrate uh, the nerves in the bottom of your feet. Uh, apparently it does not cross the blood brain barrier, but if you have anything related to your feet, okay, feet pain, nerve pain, I would take benfotamine. Another thing you have to realize too, when you take B1, if you are magnesium deficient, you may find that the B1 doesn't work as well. So you might want to find a supplement with either magnesium or even take magnesium sometime during that day, or just make sure you're not deficient. Certain drugs will create a deficiency of B1. Metformin and diuretics, certain antibiotics. If someone has a lot of inflammation, chances are they're going to be deficient in B1. Now, if you want a really good summary of all of the functions of B1, I put everything in one download. Click the link down below and you can download it for free.